Here's how not to paint a bedroom over the weekend. On Saturday morning, sleep in as late as you can. Once you're up, you're gonna realize that you have none of the paint or supplies that you need, so you're gonna to head to the paint store right around one o'clock. After having a mild cardiac event in front of the color wall, you manage to get your colors selected, paint purchased, along with a random assortment of supplies. Back to the house around three o'clock, time to get jacked up on Mountain Dew and come at this thing like a spider monkey. You get to work, and over the course of a few hours, you start to develop the sneaking suspicion that this job may take longer than you originally anticipated, and that perhaps, just maybe, you need more than one drop cloth. You ride your sugar and caffeine high as long as you can, but around 1.30 a.m., you're gonna call it a day. Due to the late night, you wake up slightly later than you wanted to on Sunday morning, but that doesn't matter, because it's game time. Ready, go! You pick up your brush, and you just start smearing goo everywhere. Ceiling, walls, trim, it's all just chaos. Right around mid-afternoon, you're gonna realize that there is no way you're gonna finish this project today. Painting is, in fact, stupid, and unfortunately, this project is gonna drag on through the better part of the coming week. Indeed, it is not a proud day for you or your family. If that doesn't sound like an awesome situation to you, then keep watching this video. I'm gonna go over my exact process for this type of project right now. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with Practical Painting. We are professional painters here to help DIYers become better painters. And in this video, I'll be going over my process for painting a bedroom over the course of a weekend. So here is the project. You've got a 12 by 14 foot bedroom with eight foot high ceilings. It's typical drywall construction with basic trim and doors. Also, it's been previously painted with latex-based paint. The goal is that by the end of Sunday night, you've got the ceiling, the walls, and the trim all painted, which means you've done two coats of flat ceiling paint to the ceiling, two coats of semi-gloss paint to the trim and doors, and two coats of matte or eggshell paint to the walls. Now I'm gonna break this process down over the span of a week. It's super important to start this early. So if you think you're gonna be painting in the future, like say I wanna paint next weekend, you should be thinking about this paint project the previous weekend. The first step in the process is to get your paint colors nailed down. Do whatever it is you need to do uh, to get those sorted. So go to the paint store, look at the swatches there, get a color deck. Uh, you can go to a website like Samplies and get colors, um, those samples sent to you. If you do that, you need to really start the week before because it's going to take some time to ship to you. Uh, you could also get actual um, sample paint from any of those paint stores and put those up on the wall. The bottom line is you need to have your colors picked by Wednesday night. That's super important. Don't wait too long on that and don't be picking your paint colors the day of. If you want a simple approach, I would go with untinted trim paint and untinted ceiling paint. That way you're only dealing with the wall paint. That brings us to Thursday and on this day you want to be gathering your paint and supplies. It's a really good idea to check through your house and see what you have already. A lot of times people have stuff stashed away in the shed or whatever, but you want to kind of get a head count on what you have available to you and kind of gather all that stuff in one area. And then now it's time to actually go and order the paint and get any supplies that you don't have on hand. For a room that I described uh, earlier, a 12 by 14 bedroom, it's very likely you're going to need one gallon of ceiling paint, two gallons of wall paint, one gallon of trim paint, and then uh, some primer. So you may not need a whole gallon of primer, but you're gonna want some. So that's kind of your typical loadout. Now you wanna go get all of those supplies, bring them back to your house, and then set up a supply area. Uh, really good idea to stage your supplies outside of the room you're actually painting. And then you can kind of set them out in the way that makes sense to you. Uh, but it's kind of the maison place, if you will, of your painting project. Friday rolls around, it's time to break the room down and do your wall prep. You can get this done after work and it's not too big a deal. So first you wanna take a reference photo just in case you're gonna put things back from whence they came, just to make your job a lot easier when you go to reassemble the room. Once you do that, you wanna declutter the room. So anything you can get out of there relatively easily, you wanna do that. Smaller pieces of furniture, trash cans, anything like that. Uh, also, you're gonna to wanna to remove anything off the walls. So uh, pictures, wall hangings, uh, uh, window dressing, any of that stuff, like blinds, all that crap, you want to get that out of there and put that in a separate room. Uh, once you get all the small stuff out of there, then you're going to want to center the larger pieces of furniture into the middle of the room. Uh, usually you're left with like a bed and a dresser or something like that. Uh, just be mindful of if you have a ceiling fan and you need to cut around that, you need to leave yourself a little bit of space to actually get to it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, once all the furniture is centered, you're going to want to tarp the room off, so you're going to plastic off the furniture and then run drop cloths around the uh, the rest of the flooring to cover everything up. You want to make sure everything is covered really well so you don't get any splatter on uh, your stuff. Uh, once everything is tarped off, then you're going to start your prep out. 
So that's the time to spackle any big holes in the wall, any repairs you need to do, any imperfections in the walls that you see clearly, either in the ceiling or the walls, uh, caulk in any gaps in the trim, and then wood putty any nail holes that you see, uh, usually in the trim as well. So that's kind of your first round, and you're in really good shape to start cracking on Saturday morning. Now it is Saturday, and it's time to really start cracking. I would recommend starting early. If you're an early bird, that's fantastic. If you're not an early bird, I would highly recommend starting at least by like 8 or 8.30, uh, actually painting in the room. So first, you're going to want to sand and prime any of those spackle spots that you did on Friday night. And, uh, and then once those are sanded and primed, I would run the vacuum again, just get up any dust that you created when you were sanding. And then it's time to uh, cut and roll your first coat on the ceiling. So do a coat on the ceiling, and then while that's drying, do a coat on the trim. Then you're going to go back and coat the ceiling again, and then you're going to coat the trim again. So that's, that's your assignment for Saturday. By the end of the day Saturday, if you can have the ceiling two-coated and the trim two-coated, that means you are all buttoned up and done, uh, ceiling trim done, and you're just left with the walls on Sunday. So that's Sunday, and all you have left are the walls. So you're in pretty good shape. What you want to do first is tape out the baseboard, and that's how we do it. You just run some, usually we use some yellow frog tape, and tape that baseboard uh, line that goes right into the wall. So you're just going to put a piece of tape along the, the baseboard there, so when you cut into it, you get a nice clean line when you pull that up. Um, then you're going to cut in the walls and then roll the walls, that's one coat, and then once that dries, it's a good idea to take a look at the walls and see if you have any defects that you are like, that are super glaring that you missed when you did your prep on Friday night, and do, you can do a little touch-up spackling if you need to, and if you happen to do that, you might need to push dry that spackle so that you keep things moving along. You can do that with a big box fan or any kind of fan uh, that just blows air on those spackle spots. You can also use a heat gun. Just be aware, don't use a heat gun if you have sprinklers in your house. I had a bad experience. Anyways, once those spackle spots are dry, sand them, prime them, and then put another coat of your finish paint on top of that. Why would you do that? So then the whole room is back up to one coat. Once that all dries out, run another uh, top coat. So you're going to cut everything in again with your wall paint and then roll the walls again. So now all the painting is done. You're waiting for things to dry. You can go ahead and pull tape off all the baseboard or anything else you felt you need to tape out. If you'd like a more in-depth look at this whole process, I would highly recommend taking a look at our How to Paint a Bedroom series. Uh, I will link to it at the end of this video, uh, but each of those videos goes into way more detail of all the things that I mentioned in this one. That being said, good luck with your project, and until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.